Introduction to Material Testing Material testing is defined as an established technique that is used for the measurement of the characteristics and behaviors of a substance such as ceramics, plastics, metals etc. under different conditions. And the result obtained is used in determining the suitability of the materials for various application. Standard test methods have been established by national and international bodies such as the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, and the American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM. The major reasons why materials are being tested are to ensure quality of the materials, to prevent failure of the material during usage, to determine the properties, to make informed choices while using materials. Factors of safety is a very important factor in material testing. It is defined as the ratio comparing the actual stress in a material and the safe usable stress. Material testing are classified into two, mechanical, destructive test, and non-destructive test. In mechanical, destructive test, the materials may be physically tested to destruction. It normally specify a value for properties such as strength, hardness, toughness, etc. Non-destructive test. Samples or finished articles are tested before they are used. Types of material testing. Under mechanical destructive testing we have tensile test, compression test, hardness test, torsion test, creep test, fatigue test, impact test. Under non-destructive testing we have penetrant test, magnetic particle test, eddy current test, ultrasonic test, x-ray test. Tensile test. This is one of the most important and fundamental test in mechanical testing of materials. It provides information on the strength and ductility of materials. They are simple, relatively inexpensive and fully standardized. The test specimen can be round or flat. The tensile test is performed by gripping the ends of the sample and elongating the sample. The extensomer is used to apply measured force to a test specimen. The force acting on the sample is measured by a load cell continuously during the experiment and may be plotted against the elongation of the sample during the experiment. Variables such as strain, stress, elasticity, tensile strength, ductility can be gauged. The basic result is the so-called engineering stress, engineering strain curve. Note, cup and cone fractures signifies a ductile materials. A shear fracture would indicate a brittle material. A brief description of the curve. Ultimate tensile strength. The maximum tensile stress that a material is capable of developing during a test. Load. This is the applied force. Stress. The intensity of the components of forces that resist a change in the form of a body. Elastic limit. The greatest amount of stress that a material can develop without taking a permanent set. Percent elongation. The total percent strain that a specimen developed during testing. Compression test. Compression test is the opposite of tensile test. The compressive loads tends to squeeze or compacts test materials. The choice of a compression test over other types of test largely depends on the type of loads the material will be subjected to during application. Materials such as concrete, bricks and some ceramics products are more often used in application for their compressive loading properties and are therefore tested in compression test. During a typical compression test, data are collected. The applied load, resultant deformation and condition of the specimen. For brittle materials, the compressive strength is relatively easy to obtain. For ductile materials, the compressive strength is based on arbitrary deformation value. They do not exhibit the sudden fracture that brittle materials exhibit. They tend to buckle and barrel out. Disc test compression test. This is a compression test developed for brittle materials such as ceramics and glass. A disc-shaped specimen is loaded between solid platens. 
tensile stresses build up perpendicular to the centerline along the disc, fracture begins and the disc will split vertically. Tensile stress from the test is calculated with the equation stress equals 2 times multiply load at fracture divided by pi times diameter of disc times thickness. Note. Prior to this and any test, the dimensions of the specimen should be measured with adequate precision using proper instruments. Once these measurements have been taken and recorded, the specimen can then be loaded into the testing machine. Care should also be taken to ensure that the axis of the specimen is centered and aligned with the axis of loading. Hardness test. Hardness is the ability to withstand indentation. Various machines can be used to carry out hardness test, they are Hardness testing machine. The indenter is pressed into the metal. Softer materials leave a deeper indentation. Brinal hardness test uses a ball-shaped indenter. It cannot be used for thin material. Ball may deform on very hard material. Surface area of indentation is measured. Vickers hardness test uses square-shaped pyramid indenter. It measured lengths of diagonal on indentation. It is usually used on very hard materials. It gives accurate results. Rockwell Hardness Test. It gives direct reading. It is used for soft materials. Rockwell Cone uses diamond cone for hard materials. It is flexible, quick and easy to use. Torsion Test. In addition to tension and compression, a workpiece may be subjected to shear strains. Torsion Test is used for determination of properties in shear, usually performed in a thin tubular specimen. Shear stress can be calculated with the formula torque divided by 2 times pi times radius square times thickness of tube. Shear strain is calculated with the formula radius of tube times angle of twist in radiant divided by length of tube. The ratio of the shear stress to the shear strain is the elastic range and is known as the shear modulus or modulus of rigidity. The angle of twist to fracture in the torsion of solid round bars and elevated temperature can help estimate forgeability of metals. Creep test. When a weight is hung from a piece of load and left for a number of days, the load will stretch. This is said to be creep. Problem with creep increase when the materials are subject to high temperature or the materials themselves have low melting points. Creep can cause materials to fail at a stress well below their tensile strength. Fatigue test. Fatigue is due to the repeated loading and unloading. When a material is subjected to a force acting in different direction at different times it can cause cracking. In time, this will cause the material to fail at a load that is much less than TS tensile strength. This is called fatigue failure. Vibration, for example, is a serious cause of fatigue failure. Fatigue can be prevented with good design practice. A smooth surface finish reduces the chance of surface cracking. Sharp corners should be avoided. Corrosion should be avoided as this can cause fatigue cracks. Impacts test. Toughness of metal is the ability to withstand impact. Two types of impact test are Izod test and Sharpie impact test. Izod test. Strikes at 167 joules. Test specimen is held vertically. The notch faces the striker. Sharpie impact test. Strikes from higher position with 300 joules. Test specimen is held horizontally. Notch faces away from strikers. Non-destructive test. In non-destructive test, the components are not destroyed. It is used to test for internal flaws. It is useful for testing valuable components. Use in testing components that are in use. Examples of non-destructive test. Penetrant test. They are used for surface flaws. The oil and chalk test is a traditional version of this type of testing. Colored dyes are now used. This method is useful for finding surface cracks. Fluorescent penetrant is applied by spraying and it soaks into any surface flaws. Under UV light the floor fluoresce along the cracks and it is easily seen. 
magnetic particle test. This type is used for ferrous metals. It detects flaws close to the surface of the materials. The component to be tested must first be magnetized. Magnetic particles which can be dry or in solution are sprinkled onto the test piece. The particles stick to the magnetic field, and flaws can be inspected usually by examining the pattern to see if it has been distorted. The component must be demagnetized after testing. Note: Flaws which are near the surface are more likely to be detected, because the distorted magnetic field show up in the magnetic particle pattern. Eddy current testing is used for non-ferrous metal. Arc current is passed through the coil. The test piece is passed under the coil causing eddy currents to flow through the test piece. This causes a magnetic field to flow in the test piece. The flaws are detected in an oscilloscope by measuring a change in the magnetic field. Ultrasonic testing. The ultrasonic probe sends the sound wave through the piece. The sound waves bounces of the pieces and return. The results are then placed on the display screen in the form of peaks. Where the peaks fluctuate this will show a fault in the piece. This is generally used to find internal flaws in forging, casting and in weld inspections. X-ray test. The X-rays are released by heating the cathode. They are then accelerated by the DC current and directed onto the piece by the tungsten anode. The X-rays then pass through the test piece onto an X-ray film which displays the results. The X-rays cannot pass through the faults as easily, making them visible on the X-ray film. This is a test generally used to find the internal flaws in materials. It is used to check the quality of welds, for example, to find voids or cracks.